Uh, we're quite flabbergasted to see so many people here this evening, but at the same time, delighted to see you all, so thank you very much for coming. That's the Irish for shut the fuck up. Anyway, what you're about to witness this evening is the product of um, a number of people having nothing better to do. That's my one, yeah. And you know what happens when people have nothing better to do? They generally get up to some form of divilment or other. And this is the product of said divilment. Basically what you're going to see is um, a very loose adaptation of uh, a traditional tale. And I won't take it any further than that for fear we might offend anybody. But I'm sure we will anyway, and to be quite honest, we really don't care. So if you're faint of heart, close your ears now. So as I say, this is a, a loose adaptation brought into the relatively modern days of a very traditional tale. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, haha, <laughs> he says, looking for these buttons, the nativity. Ladies and gentlemen, between Jesus and Bono, being that Jesus doesn't walk around Dublin thinking he's God. So that's been going around the place for years. Well, what you were about to see explains how all this came about. Well, I hope it's not another load of rubbish, because that's all we usually get to this place. Well, you'd be well used to loads of rubbish anyway. <laughs> it happened in Lacaragua, which is just south of Caliphy over on the west side. And the fallout from this event has left a lasting mark on the country. Elements within our society actually celebrate this event constantly. What event are you on about, you old goat? The happening I speak of has changed our society like few before or after. This travesty, and I have to call it a travesty even though I can barely use the word, this travesty led to the establishment of the unmarried mother's allowance. <laughs> a travesty indeed. Since that happened, I've had to pay my taxes. This I've got to see. I think he'll do me here like Angelina. Yeah, Joey'd like that. Joey's the fella. I nearly called me brother. <laughs> the first time I met him, we were running around the front there and he was there too. In amongst the horses, in his jocks. He never guessed what. One of the gangs that loved him. Anyways, I took sorrow on him. I brought him in and I gave him some of my brother's shreds. Oh, you should have seen the state. And, my God, you are up to his knees, the poor fecker. He's a lanky little fecker. I kind of like Joey. He's not like the scangers around here. He's kind of like a hippie like Long-haired, like me. And a beard. Yeah, he likes him. He's not from California. He's from some place called Shank Hill. I think you get the dark there. I haven't been on that thing, I don't like it. Like, it's full of knobheads, you know, black rock and doggy. I prefer to do it. Don't worry, dear. You wouldn't be led to either of those fine places. Well, unless you're going to clean the toilets for somebody. <laughs> More likely to go over to steal a car. <laughs> Shut up to pay areas. I wouldn't touch anything your smelly ass is going here. <laughs> Anyways, where was I? Oh yeah, Joey. 
short, Mary Louise became the first pregnant virgin in Nicaragua. <laughs> That's virgin on the ridiculous. No pun intended. <laughs> Unfortunately, for the times that were in it, nobody believed her, and it meant she had to leave the country to have her baby. Her mother's brother kept a bed and breakfast in Birmingham, so she sent her over to him, and she told Joey in no uncertain terms that he was going too to look after her. And did he go? You better believe it. You obviously haven't met her mother. And I'm not too sure about that. I still have the marks on my back after meeting someone like that. Does she have a sister in the Liberties? Oh, shut up. We're not here to listen to your private life such as it is. So, they travelled over to Birmingham. The ferry journey was rough and Mary Louise was very green for most of it. The train from Fishcar to Birmingham was fine. 
Of course, they have to sail from Ross Lair because they were stopped by customs in Temple Old trying to get out of Nicaragua to get to Dunleary. <coughs> Damn right, too. Can't have bloody riffraff like that in Dublin 4. <coughs> so, wearily, so. they both made their way to her uncle's B&B, which is near the NEC. Finally, they find the house. They knock and wait. And eventually, the door is opened. The <laughs> noise <laughs> comes in. Somewhere to stay and look at me, give us a place. Does this look like the face of Gil Patchley? No, Patchley's. No, me, please. And I looks like a fucking dog. <laughs> I'll tell you something. There are more miles of canals in Birmingham than are in Venice. Give and live in a bar. Is that camels or two humps? I want to know. That's canals, yes. I tell you, ah, that's the vanilla me arse. Ah, shut up, use a bed. No. So, left with no option, they head off to use their gondola. They eventually have to settle for a disused barge. Mm. Unfortunately, all this aggravation has brought on Mary Louise's labour. What happened to Joey? <laughs> Hello? Is that the uh, veterinary clinic? <laughs> no. Veterinary clinic? No, it's a midwife. Ah, jeez, I want the vet, not a midwife. Come here, give it to me. Hello, is that the midwife? Yes, it is. Where are you reading from? Neighbors to me ankles. <laughs> <laughs> for the cheap vodka, some red bull, and the scene was set. The boss sent Gabriel over to help with the arrangements, but interest in seeing the boss's new song was so great that a bigger venue was needed. And so the stadium was acquired and the boss sent out the word, you too can come. 
That's how he thinks. Come on, boys, the baby's born. We have to get up there and you have to see Mary Louise. Okay, here we go. And behave yourselves, because it's the boss of baby. and head back to Shank Hill. That boy is a brat anyway. <laughs> Mary, Mary Louise wasn't that bothered either. She knew that the boss would look after her. So soon after she went down to the social and lo and behold, there was a put payment book waiting for her. That begs the question, who is this boss we've been hearing about? <laughs> well, you have to remember that at that time there was a lot of shadowy characters in Dublin who seemed to have a lot of influence. You mean like Charlie and Bertie and those guys? Shut up, will you, before you have us up before a tribunal without a good solicitor. <laughs> and you've heard of the general and the monk? Well, this guy is even bigger than those. That wouldn't be hard. So one of them is dead, and the other fellow drives a taxi. You're going to get both of us killed if you keep this up. And that, as they say, is that the rest is history. <coughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
everybody involved up here on stage. And that kind of day and everybody will take part in that. But some of our main characters. <laughs> Maria Gabelheim. <laughs> Common, Joey the Hippie Jiffy. John Lawson, our innkeeper. Mr. Sean Krause, the gay courier. And our, main, our special guests, Stafford Wardog, Mr. Sean Lowney, and Mr. Desmond Terrell. And our very own, Mary Louise. Here you are, Ivy, give it up for her. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your indulgence. We'll let y'all go for a cigarette and then we shall pass the hat around and we will ask you to give generously for the Irish Kidney Association. Thank you very much indeed. Happy New Year. Thank you very much.